Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about if you should make your own VPN. What are the pros on the cons? I've been on this channel for around two or three years talking about 60 plus VPNs and I've reviewed more than anyone on YouTube. But in this entire time, I never really took the time to make my own VPN provider, mostly because I had some ideas on what the pitfalls would be. However, I finally decided to set one up and see how it would compare to actually buying and using just the VPN provider. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons so you can decide if you maybe want to try it. If you guys want to help support the channel, go ahead and check out VPN tier list or my merch down in the description down below. I'll also be putting a link down in the description to the server provider that I'll be discussing in this video if you decide you want to do this as well. All right, guys. So first of all, let's start talking about, you know, what it really means to start your own VPN service. So usually when you're buying a consumer grade VPN, something like TorGuard, AirVPN, some other VPNs on my tier list, you're going to a website or a company and you're buying the access to their service. Then you download an application, you log in with the credentials and you're pretty much good to go. It's very simple, pretty easy, and it's actually very noob friendly nowadays. However, when you wanna set up your own VPN, what you're gonna to have to do is use something called a VPS service or a virtual private server. Now, what are you gonna use the virtual private server for? Well, basically you're gonna find a company that will provide you this. It's gonna be kinda of in the cloud. You're gonna get access to this capability and it's gonna have some specs and stuff like that. You're pretty much going to use this server as kind of like an external way to connect to your own server there. Instead of paying a VPN that has their own service they pay for, you're pretty much going to be making your own. So there are a lot of different other websites out there that provide VPS services. For this video, I'm going to be talking about Vulture because after doing some research, I found that it's pretty much the cheapest and kind of fastest VPS provider that most people are setting up VPNs with. Another cool thing about Vulture is that you can install OpenVPN on it very easily through the application setting in their kind of command panel or website interface. And that's what I ended up doing. So the, one of the cool things about VPSs is, is that they're a little bit cheaper to start out than let's say like a VPN provider. It's around $2.50 a month, um, one at a time. I'm pretty sure you don't have to pay bulk. You know, there are some VPN providers that over an extended length of time, it will roughly equate to around $250 a month. Let's say if you bought TorGuard for two years with my promo code TomSpark, that would be around $50 for two years, which would actually equate to around $2 per month. So it's it's kind of cheaper than a lot of other options out there though. You know, TorGuard is one of the cheapest VPNs on the channel, which is why I always recommend it. But you know, this VPS service Vulture, one of the cheaper plans that you could get from it, it is pretty cheap at around $2.50 a month. Another cool thing with Vulture is that you can actually kind of gain free access. Basically, if you click on my referral link down below, you could get like a hundred dollars credit that you can use and then I'll get a small cutback as well. So it's almost like you can use it for free for a certain amount of time, depending on how much data you use. It's kind of how it charges you that amount. So I was doing some testing today and I think I used maybe like a dollar of a hundred dollar credit. So you can kind of get more free access um, than perhaps, uh, you know, a traditional VPN, which is gonna limit you um, actually pretty severely. You know, most of the free VPN providers out there Stuff like Winscribe and Proton, they're pretty limited, only give you a couple gigabytes, so you can't really do much on it. However, with this VPS kind of trial thing, I do think you have a little bit more flexibility. And you're not really giving your information away to a sketchy VPN company. Now, there are some other cool things about Vulture and these kind of VPS services um, that are not necessarily related exactly to VPN. Let's say you got Vulture and you kind of started a server for VPN. You can also start and run another server on the website very easily for something like Minecraft or having some kind of virtual machine on there, which is pretty cool as well. You can do whatever you want with that. Whereas VPN providers don't really provide those services per se. We've seen more and more VPN providers kind of provide things like password managers and file storage and stuff, but there aren't any VPN providers really providing VPS services. Now the difference between a VPS and a VPN um, you know, how can you trust either one with your information? Well, unfortunately, I don't really think there is that much difference. Some people say you shouldn't trust a VPN provider. Instead, you should make your own VPN with a VPS service. But in that case, and in this case, 
We're specifically trusting Vulture as a VPS hosting provider. And I don't really think there is that much is that much difference between trusting a VPN company and something like Vulture. Of course, the way you could do it would be to make your own server on a computer in your house or something like that. So you directly own it. But well, that's going to require more work and other stuff as well as expensive. That's not going to be what's going to be happening with Vulture. It's kind of like a different ball game altogether. But I don't think it necessarily provides you with more anonymity or more protection legally than just buying a VPN from a VPN company. Another cool thing with um, a VPS is that when you're making your own VPN, you could do stuff like Linux terminals and you can pretty much enter in custom commands and install stuff like WireGuard. I tried to do this and I was tinkering around with it today, but it can require a decent amount of knowledge of Linux commands and stuff like that, interacting with a terminal and text-based editors. Um, it can be a little bit complicated. Um, not only that, but you're gonna have to install WireGuard on it with commands and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely not as easy as using WireGuard on traditional VPN providers. It is pretty cool that you can have some of that flexibility and install it yourself. I would have preferred that Vulture had a WireGuard application on their website, like the OpenVPN application, but they don't have that yet, which is disappointing. Another thing about Vulture or signing up with your own VPN through a VPS is that you get like a specific IP. You get to pick like one location. And now this can be a downside if you're someone who likes hopping around with normal VPN providers. However, having a specific IP and knowing what your IP always is can be useful when browsing the internet. Certain websites might start to recognize you and not lock you out. Although I did have the problem of certain websites like Bitly and Netflix not even working with a specific IP, which was actually a pretty big con. However, you know, banking websites, if they recognize this IP, maybe they will start letting you log in more. So theoretically, it might be useful sometimes to have one locked IP. You can also buy additional IPs as well on the website, although the cost starts to add up. Now, one of the things that I was surprised with Vulture is that when I actually went into the control panel and just installed OpenVPN as an application on my server, it was actually very easy to set up. I just entered in the URL code of my server and then went to it, installed OpenVPN, and then downloaded OpenVPN onto my computer as an application, and then I was able to connect to the server. It only took around five to 10 minutes and it was actually very easy, much easier than actually trying to set up WireGuard in my opinion. Um, but I still do think it's actually easier to do it traditionally with a VPN provider than having to do that. I do think it is easier just to download a VPN application and log in, especially with some easy ones um, like ExpressVPN, where you just copy and paste the code to log into the application. They make it super, super easy. And I don't think it's as easy to buy a VPS service, having to log in and everything like that, having to install it, go to the IP, download it, install it. It's just more work, but it's not that bad just for OpenVPN specifically. I do think starting your own VPN and kind of making it and seeing some of the behind the scenes through this process, getting the server and everything like that, it can be kind of fun and it was an interesting learning experience for me as someone who doesn't really go that far into kind of that part of the tech. Now let's talk about some of the cons. Just like it's hard to decide which VPN to use, there are a lot of VPS providers and it's hard to find which one is best. Although I do think that Vulture is probably one of the higher regarded ones here that I've been researching that has pretty good speeds and good prices. Now I do think using a open VPN application on Vulture um, is pretty easy to use, but it doesn't have as much powerful features as something like TorGuard or AirVPN. Some of these clients have advanced kind of customization settings and cool things like kill switches and other customizations have built in that doesn't exist with just OpenVPN. I found that, like I mentioned already, certain websites didn't seem to work with my specific IP. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any streaming service to work. Stuff like Netflix wasn't even loading the page. And that's disappointing, especially since I've seen other people like Linus Tech Tips claim that by using your own VPN IP, they're not gonna be able to detect it and you're able to access streaming sources better. In my experience, that was simply not the case and a lot of websites were having difficulties with my VPN connected. I don't think that using Vulture and setting up your own VPN is very useful for torrenting, avoiding DMCA's, avoiding copyright trolls and stuff like that if you wanna pirate content because the DMCA's company is gonna contact Vulture and they're gonna pretty much know who you are. I think VPNs themselves have cleaner privacy policies. They are kind of built for people that are using them that way 
and they have kind of set up the infrastructure, especially some of these companies, um, that they do not collect logs and stuff like that. Where with, with Vulture's privacy policy, it's a little bit more confusing exactly, you know, what they're collecting on you and what they will give up when requested to do so. So I do not think that using Vulture and just because you're running your own VPN means that you're not beholden to anyone. Since you're still using a hosting provider, there still is liability that could get you in trouble and get you your name tossed around. Now, one of the biggest problems I had with my Vulture VPS server is since I got a pretty affordable plan, kind of in the same range as a normal shared VPN or consumer grade VPN like I mentioned, I didn't get very good speeds. I was actually getting pretty me mediocre speeds, actually very slow, probably by a factor of one fifth of what I can get with something like TorGuard. I was getting around seven to eight megabytes a second downloading a torrent, or with TorGuard, I could get around 30 to 40 megabytes a second. Not only that, but my ping was higher than normal. My download rate wasn't as good as I can get with normal VPN providers. Anyways, guys, that's some of my pros and cons of setting up my, my own VPN and if I think it's worth it. In conclusion, for people using consumer grade VPNs like on my tier one VPNs, I don't think it's really worth it to start your own VPN. I would only really recommend doing it as a kind of like a fun side project and just kind of testing it around. But for people who are looking for a VPN to do certain things, like unbox streaming services, get really good speeds for downloading torrents, have the privacy and anonymity of a company that's probably not gonna give away your information, and have good pricing, I do think that buying a consumer grade VPN is totally 100% a viable option, and it's the one I prefer rather than setting up my own VPN on a VPS service like Vulture. However, if you do wanna try it out, again, link down in the description down below to try out Vulture and setting it up yourself. And let me know down in the comments down below if you wanna do this and if you wanna guide sometime in the future, I could probably show you how to set up one on Vulture, set up your own open VPN service with open VPN. Let me know if you're interested in that and I'll maybe make a guide doing that. I'll see you again on the next video very soon.